Hello and welcome back to our discussion on the cash flow statements. We, in the last uh, session we saw, we started discussing on why is cash from operation not same as profit. We'll continue that question, why is cash from operation not same as PAT. Uh, to recap, we saw that a certain balance sheet uh, for two years given, income statement given, and the PAT for that year was 2065. The entire all figures are in thousands. And we calculated CFO and we saw that CFO is negative 1235. And we saw that PAT is not same as CFO because of non-cash items, because of non-operating items, because of the working capital items or the credit transaction. But the question that comes to where are the where are the cash flows? Where are the cash flows? So here we found the adjustments to answer, to find an answer or to arrive at why is cash flow not same as the profit. But if somebody asks where are the cash flows? So to do that let us continue with the same question and actually find CFO by using the direct method. The direct method will actually tell us the direct method will tell us, will show the actual receipts and actual payment. Whereas an indirect method try to explain why is PAT different from CFO, the direct method will show the actual cash flows from the debtor and actual cash flows, cash payments to the creditor, towards salaries, towards rent and, and taxes, which are not visible in this. So let us start with the debtor. So the debtors, we had an opening debtor, we had an opening debtor of um, 2,225. Let us assume that the entire sales is for credit because we don't have any information and the closing creditor debtors is given. So there was a debtor, there is a sale, there is still 3,400, 500, that means the company has collected, company has collected the cash to the extent of 3750. So we'll say that this is the collection. So the collection from the debtor is 3750. How did we get it? We, we compared the opening debtors, closing debtors and sales. So opening debtors plus sales, less closing data is collection. In this case, no bad debts, no discount. So we have not considered that. So, so the collection during this period is 3,750. Similarly, payment. Payments for what? Payments for the purchase of stock and the corresponding item is a creditor. To find the creditor, it's always better to find the stock purchases during the period. So stock at the end of the year was 2000. They have sold during this period 1000. So this much of stock they should have and out of that they had opening stock of 1500. So where is the balance coming from? So 2000 plus 1000 so 1500 is the balancing figure which is which we say that's a purchase of stock and the purchase also for the time being we assume that as a credit purchase so let me write down that so assumption assume that it's a credit purchase okay it's a credit purchase um, so okay show the comment. So the credit purchases is in a... So now with the credit purchase let us see how much payment has been made to the creditor. So opening creditor was 2000. You made the purchases as we calculated here 1500. The closing creditor is 1200. So at the beginning you had 2000. You paid 15. You purchased once more 1500 on credit you're still having 1200 credit 
means you have okay you made the payment of 2300 during this period as the to to the creditor so payment to the creditor is 2300 collection from the debtor is 3750 payment to the creditor is 2300 salary during this period the entire salary has been paid because there is no outstanding salary here so the entire salary is paid so is the case with the rent we paid the entire rent because there is no outstanding or accrued rent here similarly we paid tax okay so the entire tax has been paid we are not taking interest because we are finding we are assuming that interest to be cash from financing activity so payments and therefore the balancing figure balancing figure 1235 is a cash from operation so cash from operation has been determined in this case by using by using the direct method and the direct method will show the the actual cash inflows and cash outflow and here the cash inflow is from the data which we calculated by seeing the, uh, the the debtors balances and we calculated the payment to the creditor by taking the stock account and the creditors account and we assume that the entire purchases is for credit and that becomes that helps us in determining the amount to be paid on the creditor so the CFO in an indirect method will tell us why is a profit not same as bad whereas the direct method will show actual receipts and actual payments thank you very